Hello, Dr. Jenny Sue Flanagan of Just Simple Science here. Don't throw away those pumpkins just yet. You're going to want to watch this video and learn how you can engage your students in designing a testable question using pumpkins. This is by far the best scientific inquiry piece that you can do with kids. It puts the real fun back into learning. It's gooey and messy, and it's a great way for kids to make observations over time. So let's get started doing some science. One of the things I love best about the fall is using pumpkins to engage my students in scientific inquiry. You know, there's nothing better than engaging kids in real scientific work. For this activity, you're going to need two pumpkins again, and you're going to need a knife because we're actually going to be cutting one pumpkin, carving it, and seeing what happens in the difference of carving one and not carving a pumpkin. And you're going to need to have a place that you can put these pumpkins so they can decompose over time. For the engage and the explore portion of this lesson, we're going to use a great instructional strategy called see, think, and wonder. I love using this strategy because it's a great way to engage students. It's also a way that I can pre-assess students to see what they're thinking, what they might already know, what words they may use, and it's super simple. And of course, you know, here at Just Simple Science, we love simple science pieces. So this is what you're going to do. You're going to use this picture with the students. And you're simply going to put it up on the screen and you're not going to tell them anything about it. You're just going to ask them to use words to describe what they see. So again, when we're describing what we're seeing, we need to use our physical properties associated with what we see with our sense of sight. So kids may say things like they see colors, they see black, they see red, they see orange, they see yellow. They may say that they see something that looks kind of fuzzy. They may see something that looks like it's sticking up in the center. You want kids to just tell you everything they see. Don't allow them to give you any inferences. Remember, an inference is different from an observation. An inference says, hey, I think this is this because I know this. So basically, students will say, well, this has got to be a pumpkin because that looks like the stem of the pumpkin. That's an inference. We just want them to describe what are they seeing when they look at the picture. Once you've had them record all the things down that they see, next I want you to ask them, what do they think about when they look at this picture? So what thoughts come to their mind? And then last, once you've had them list all the things they're thinking, you want to ask, what are they wondering about? This is the best part of the instructional strategy because this is where the kids give you all those questions that they're wondering. What is it? How is it made? Are those things living? Is this an object that you can eat? Those are great questions that my students came up with. From there, you're going to explain to the students that they're going to be doing something with this big idea in science called decomposition. Decomposition is a natural process that occurs all over the natural world. And the purpose of this process is it's how nature recycles nutrients back into the world, back into the ecosystems. And within given ecosystems, there are organisms that play the role of a decomposer, and their sole job is to break things down, things that are rotting, things that are dead. Of course, we know that things like vultures, bacteria, fungus, those are all decomposers. So you want to just talk about that they're going to be exploring some this process of decomposition and we're going to be using pumpkins to do it. But in order to do this, we need to change something about our pumpkin. Now, before we get into that process, I want to show you some other great pictures. And at the end of this quick video, I'm going to give you my email address. And if you become a subscriber to Just Simple Science on YouTube, I'll send you these pictures for free and you can use them with your students. These are pictures of the pumpkin that was decomposing in my classroom. Isn't this great? So this is black mold and it's it's usually one of the first things that we start to see on pumpkins of course factors that affect um, how pumpkins decompose temperature is a factor sunlight being in sunlight and becoming warm how moist the pumpkin is to begin with this particular pumpkin that you're seeing right here was excessively wet for whatever reason on the inside when i pulled the seeds out and you'll see here in this next picture how great of this 
stuff that we're getting. So this is all of the black mold. You can also see this fuzzy stuff right here. Let me just highlight it with the uh, with an arrow here. This right here, oops, let me go back. Sorry about that. So we're looking at this stuff right here. This is nothing more than bread mold. Yep, good old bread mold. In fact, you can see some of the spore pieces here where it's producing more of itself and it's getting ready to go out. Here's another great picture that's taken on the opening of the pumpkin where I, you know, the top of the jack-o'-lantern that I cut open to get into the pumpkin. You can actually see right here how, I mean, look how wet that looks right there. Remember, a moist environment is a great place for fungus to grow. And so you can show your kids these pictures. You can have your own kids. Great way to integrate technology in this lesson is to have your kids take pictures of the pumpkin over time. I thought this was another great picture. What a great life cycle. So here we have this great spider and guess what? He has killed one of the flies that was laying, probably eating some of the pumpkin and he got distracted and the spider was able to kill him. So after you've explained to the students about decomposition, what you're gonna do is you're gonna present them with this question. And again, you can have the kids come up with the question or you can give them the question. But something that my own students wondered is they wondered, would cutting a pumpkin cause it to, to decompose faster than not cutting a pumpkin? So we actually had one of the pumpkins in our room and it wasn't carved, but it was starting to grow mold on the outside and it got really squishy. And so this generated a lot of conversation among our students. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna want to then work with the students to come up with this hypothesis. If cutting a pumpkin will allow mold to land and grow, then a cut pumpkin should decompose faster than a pumpkin that is not cut. So again, remember, we have mold spores in the air, depending on what's actually in your air quality. I know, scary thought, isn't it? The air quality of the school or even outside if the surface area is right and it's got the right amount of moisture and the right amount of temperature, then mold's going to start to grow. So think of a place where you could put your pumpkin. Now the other thing you could do is if you wanted to um, have two carved pumpkins, another variable that you could change in your experiment might be to put the pumpkin in different locations. In other words, will a pumpkin placed in the sunlight, direct sunlight, decompose faster than if it was in the shade? Again, temperature is going to make a big deal to do with how things decompose. Hotter things are, more things can grow in it. So those are two different experiments that you can do. Now remember, the very beginning of this, where we're just doing the see, think, wonder, that's just an activity. But when we get into changing something about a pumpkin, like cutting it versus not cutting it, now we're changing a variable, and we are, have designed a testable question. We are experimenting. So I hope you have fun with this. If you would like some more materials, if you haven't already become a subscriber to Just Simple Science on YouTube, please do so. I hope you find these videos um, informative and that you learn some things from them. And if you um, email me, let's say you clicked on it and you were the ninth subscriber, then email that to me and I will send you the pictures used in this video for free. And you could use them with your kids as well. And if you're interested, you don't have to because I've kind of given you the gist of the lesson, but if you wanted the lab templates and so forth, you can just go to my website on justsimplescience.com to check out the other lessons that we have. And this one will be posted there as well. All right, just remember, teaching science doesn't have to be hard or expensive. It's really simple to do good science.